This is the Sharp LC Mate Model EL429 from 1978. It's a calculator. Now I know what you're thinking, but you haven't seen the good part yet. It has a solar power cell, a LCD display with eight digits, all the usual buttons you'd find on a simple calculator. You ready for the good part? It also has an attached abacus. The 1970s was a strange time in our world. Digital technology was starting to get going, and even ordinary people started to get the idea that a big change was coming in the form of new computing machines. The Sharp Corporation was a Japanese company on the front lines of the new revolution. They produced the first TV sets made in Japan, and the first microwave oven with a rotating platform. But they really made their name with electronic calculators. They made the first transistor calculator in 1964 and the first LCD calculator in 1973. And in 1978, what was Sharp's next big idea? Something to really shake up the calculator game? The EL429. The calculator part is totally standard. You got your digits here, the decimal point, four operations, memory storage, the old C and CE clear buttons, the square root, and that mysterious percentage button. We got a classic sharp LCD display with room for eight digits and a real solar power cell. Actually, this is the only way to power this thing. There's no batteries. The calculator looks like maybe you could pop it out of there, but it's not removable. In my opinion, making these two parts detachable would be a big cop-out, a betrayal. That would represent an admission by the manufacturers that maybe some people don't want an abacus stuck on the side of their calculator. And I'm here to tell you, I do want an abacus stuck on the side of my calculator. There's a few different types of abacus used in different places around the world, and it's no surprise that EL429 uses the Japanese abacus. It's called the Soroban. Each column on the Soroban represents a digit, and in this position, they're all zero. And when I move one of the lower beads up, it counts as a 1. So this would be 1, 2, 3, and 4. The upper bead represents 5. So this would be 5, then 6, 7, 8, 9. And 10 is a 1 in the next position, like this. So here's a bigger number. This Soroban can go up to 13 digits, which makes it more capable in theory than the electronic part of the EL429 which only has eight digits. If you want to add or subtract, you just do it digit by digit. Now, I'm pretty bad at this, but a trained Soroban operator can do this faster and more accurately than I could do it on the electric. Now, preparing to make this video, I could have spent hours learning how to add accurately on a Soroban. But instead, I spent hours learning how to motion track those numbers in this YouTube video, because that's what the people want. Apparently this thing was only marketed in Japan, and it was aimed specifically at professionals in fields that were transitioning to electronics. The Soroban was a basic skill that all kids in Japan learned, and in the 1970s it was still the main computing device that basically everybody was familiar with. So this thing would have been nice for, say, an accountant who was comfortable with the Soroban but wanted to gradually modernize their skill set. Or maybe a shop run by a mom and a kid where the mom wanted the Soroban but the kid wanted the calculator. The Soroban itself was an innovation on the Chinese abacus called the Swanpan, which is the same but it has an extra bead in each position to make the mental steps a bit easier. The Swanpan has been around for a long time, at least 1500 years. To me the real strength of the abacus in general is the way it trains your mind to think about numbers in a helpful way. Like, when I was a kid, I learned to add numbers using Arabic numerals on paper, like this. And if you asked me to do that same addition in my head, even without the paper and the pencil, I would do it more or less the same way. I would imagine those numbers written down and stacked with the digits lined up. That's just the way that I think about numbers. In fact, it's hard for me to imagine, say, this number, 712, without picturing it like this in my head. The Arabic number system is burned so deep in my soul that it fundamentally changes the way that I think about numbers. Usually it's the only way I can think about numbers. And learning how to add with Arabic numerals actually makes me smarter. It gives me a way to do arithmetic in my head that otherwise I couldn't have done. I mean, could you add these numbers in your head without imagining their digits written lined up like that? 
And the abacus is the same way. For over a thousand years, people who learn the abacus as their main method of computation tend to think of numbers, even just in their head, not like this, but like this. There's still special schools today, mostly in Asia, that teach what they call the mental abacus. People can do computations super fast just by imagining an abacus in their head and moving the beads around. To me, this is the real enduring power of the abacus, even in the modern world of computing machines. The abacus trains your mind to think about numbers in a different way. When you put that next to a digital calculator, the difference is stark. The calculator part doesn't train your mind at all. It doesn't give you any insight. It doesn't make you any smarter. It just tells you the answer. The Soroban, though, if you let it, it can rewire your brain and turn you into a mental arithmetic giant. The two sides of this thing right here, they represent the classic interplay of knowledge versus wisdom. The calculator gives you knowledge, tells you the answers, the facts. But wisdom is harder to come by. If you want some insight, a real ability to understand what it is you're doing, you're better off with the Soroban. You know the road to wisdom is long and requires discipline, but the rewards can reach into your soul. They're permanent and profound. I'm pretty bad at it. Thank you.